ideal world, uh, there will be actually really no boundary between the digital and physical world. That doesn't mean that the computer has to affect everything, but it's just that the, the people will use the digital information. But the thing is, we need to choose how we, how we are going to use it. And I think, um, ideally, the somehow the information will come out of the screen. And, and there will be, it will be kind of hard to tell what is exactly physical and digital. People have been trying to shorten the gap between like, people, humans, and the digital information. And we'll, we started from the command line interface, and we had the mouse and our touch screen. But my question was, like, what kind of worlds can we have if there is actually no boundary between these two worlds? Um, so that's what I do. So I try to bring out the digital information in our 3D space that we live in, so that people can actually grab with their hands and interact with the digital information, uh, which is essentially pixels right now in the computer screen. My mom used to be a paper artist, and she's been creating a bunch of like uh, paper clay and, and origami stuff, uh, and I've been growing up with those work and by looking at, observing like how she uh, creates those things in the space using physicality and the space. It's been pretty exciting that how she conveys this complex information from her brain to the space and shape it. And it's, there's something beautiful about manipulating those with, their, with her hands. And I was just frustrated when I first saw the computer that you can't really interact with this media that's beyond, that's behind the screen. Uh, you, you're blocked by the screen, so I, that's how I started and how this thread of thought. So in one of my work that I did at Microsoft Applied Sciences Group is that you can actually put your hands inside the computer and grab pixels with your bare hands and arrange the documents and files as if you're manipulating a physical cabinet, um, while you can always come back to com typing or touchpad when you need, because that's also valuable experience. Yeah. It's not quite hologram yet, but we're trying to emulate something like hologram using other techniques. So what, we, what we're doing here is we put a transparent display in front of the keyboard. So now you can actually put your hands underneath the screen to go behind it, then type in or do all the traditional computer uh, interfaces. But then you can lift up your hands from the keyboard to reach into this kind of 3D space that's behind this transparent screen that you can see through. Um, and what's happening here is that there's a camera that's looking down, your finger gestures, you can actually do gesture and computer understands it. And another camera looks at your face. So by looking at your face, you can emulate this 3D graphics, uh, illusion of three, having 3D graphics in the 3D space floating uh, by displaying the graphics on the transparent display by changing the perspective based on where you're looking it from. So, and if you grab it, you can just gesture it, like just like how you manipulate objects, like drag it around, stretch or rotate it. So this is how we created this 3D space where like people and computer can actually interact with each other. So people have developed amazing skills to sense and manipulate the 3D space. Like we, that's a result of evolution. And then I think by bringing out the digital information to 3D space, you can actually use these skills, the skills that you're born with, to interact with them. For example, if you're a designer, sometimes you want to express your ideas directly in the space, just like you're manipulating clay or with the bricks or architecture models. So, um, and in traditional computers, because the screen is flat and all you can do is just using your fingertip to do that, like the bandwidth, communication bandwidth be between like this computer and you is very, very like narrow. Um, it doesn't have to be all, all the times, like really, it doesn't have to be always wide. But sometimes people need this expression. We want to we want to express our ideas with your gestures, and we want to think with the space. So why this matters to us? So let's say maybe after 60 years, 70 years, um, this is my last day. I'm old. Um, that I don't want to look back at my life and just realize that all I've been doing for the whole time was sitting in front of the computer and just moving my fingers. But that's not that's not what we were born for. That's we we have this. There's some something fundamental, something fundamental about this 
connection that we have, that we form with the environments around us, like how we walk and how we use our hands. It's just a, I wouldn't even um, argue. I think it's, it's something that we are all about. We are about. Mm -hmm.